Hey everyone, Mark Marshall with theparadiofiles.com and guitarsmarkmarshall.com. In this video blog, I want to talk about planning to make a live recording. Uh, last week, I went into the studio in Brooklyn Recording uh, to make a record with my band Fife and Drum, and we wanted to do the bulk of the recordings with everybody in the same room. Uh, for this particular project, it just uh, it makes sense to have everybody feeding off of each other, and, and it, I, mean, I knew that if we overdubbed, the uh, vibe just just wouldn't be the same. So um, we wanted to cut ten songs in two days, so this was going to take a, a fair bit of planning. So I think when you're going into these situations, you have to have a pretty good assessment of the studio you're working with, or if it's your studio, and how long it takes you to set up and get the ball rolling, and also the musicians that you're using on the record, uh, how long it's going to take them to get comfortable and to be able to lock in to the song that you're trying to play. I think for me and the people that I've been working with at this point, as far as the recording process goes, I know that when I bring people in, uh, they could have never heard the song before, and within about an hour to an hour and a half, we'll get the take that uh, I've wanted, you know, or, or, or we're streaming of, right? Uh, this is partly due to the experience of the musicians that I'm bringing in and on to a session, you know, people like, um, like uh, Andy Hess and, and Josh Dion and, you know, Adam Minkoff, David Berger, I mean, there's a lot of names that you're going to see on, on the list here that are, are really, really seasoned um, professionals who also have a lot of uh, uh, character to add to the recordings. When I'm doing a session of this nature, I find it really important to make a list that contains uh, the day, the song that we're going to be performing, or actually every song for that day, and then all the musicians that are going to be on each song individualized, right? And I color coordinate them, so the musicians that are in black are the core band members of Fife and Drum. Sean Dixon and Adam Mikoff have been with Fife and Drum since the beginning, so they're, they're like our, our, our family. And we had a lot of great guests on this record, you know, David Berger, Scott Kettner, um, Todd Caldwell, Andy Hess, Josh Dion. You can see all these uh, musicians in purple, and that's because they're uh, they're guests, and also that it's a little bit of a reminder to me that they're not going to be there all day, right? So they they have other things to do. They're gonna they're gonna come and go, or it's possible they might hang out a little bit, but most likely in musicians, and especially in New York City, like everybody's hustling, so they have to go and do other things, right? And uh, and this just kind of keeps it clear to me, like okay, this is what's coming up next, right? I, I made, uh, obviously, a list for, for Monday and Tuesday, the two days we're recording. Now, I made a separate list that I was going to give to um, to Andy and the, the crew at Brooklyn Recording so they would have an idea of what the song was about and what the instrumentation was on it. Obviously, for labeling and Pro Tools and just having an awareness of what microphones and all that stuff. Uh, as you can see, day one, Hollow Ground, I made a note on it. It's a New Orleans vibe. Uh, and I have um, instruments, lead vocal with ukulele, right? Because we wanted to have the, uh, the the Abby, the vocalist, in isolation. And I knew she was going to be playing ukulele, which we also ran to an amp. Um, two snare drums standing, two concert bass drums, one tom, all in a circle in the live room. Uh, you know, I didn't get, like, super, super specific about it, but there's it's just enough so that they know what's going on, right? And, and even, even for me... Um, on a session, particularly if it's a session that I, I didn't write, so I, I co-wrote all these songs. Um, but when I don't, and I'm working with an artist whose songs I didn't write, this is even helpful for me to be looking at just to kind of reboot my brain on on what's going on with what songs. Okay, and I did make a third list too. Uh, this was for me going to the studio. Uh, now it's a lot easier when I'm recording in my my small production space, which you see now because I don't really have to transport things, so there's not a lot of things I have to remember. But when we're going to a, a studio to do a couple of days lockout, you have to, to take um, the gear that you need. So I made this uh, this list for myself so I can um, go through and make sure that I, I have everything I had planned on using to get the sounds for the record. Uh, I'm a big fan of lists, you know, and I think that um, when, when preparing to do a session, the list especially when when uh, it, it's a big session and there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of people coming and a lot of questions being asked, having as many things on paper and organized just to give yourself some clarity is really important and it'll take off a lot of the stress and pressure from the situation because uh, no matter what you think, when you get in there, it's 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 if you're producing the session, uh, there's not going to be a lot of downtime. You know, you're you're going to try to take a snack break and you're the guy that or, or woman, you're the, the person that people are going to come to and ask every 
single question to. Uh, so having these laid out and to eliminate some of the uh, the questioning process can can really help and, and, and allow you to kind of get into the zone of, of hearing the music and producing the music more.